Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We got an interesting one for you today uh, from the UK. The UK people are going to love this. Uh, we're going to get into the Jack Collins Zach Chelly rematch. The first one ended in a controversial draw, which I thought Colin won, and no one else seems to agree with me. Uh, but we're going to get into that. Before uh, we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every major fight. Uh, so you how to bring down the house consistently, make money on the sport of boxing. The boxing odds makers and bookies, they don't know how to handicap the sport. I do. I know how to make money, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make money consistently betting on the sport of boxing. I don't gamble, but if you do, uh, I use DraftKings. Uh, DraftKings, I think, is the most user-friendly, has the best interface, and the odds and the lines are, are pretty fair, I think. Uh, so I always use DraftKings all. Also, please subscribe to my other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. So we got an interesting one. Cullen versus Chelly. It's a conflict of styles. It's a good fight. Uh, we had the original one several years ago. It was in Eddie's Garden 2020, I'm guessing it had to be. <clears throat> yep, 2020. In, in, in Eddie's backyard. And it was a, a, an interesting fight. You know, not a high action fight, not, not not a bar burner, not something that we demanded to see again, but we are getting it again on a boxer card. I'm going to try to stream this thing somehow so I can watch it live and not watch it a couple days later on Daily Motion. And I, I, I think Colin. The, the ball's in Colin's car. Like, like, Colin, if he fights his fight, he wins. If he stays patient, if he uses his height, he uses his reach. Straight, straight, straight punches. Don't pull your punches. Straight. Keep him at arm's length. Tell I can't get inside. He doesn't jab. He doesn't really slip a lot. He doesn't have good head movement. And he lunges and he swings wild. And it all comes down to does Colin – Fight a disciplined fight. If he fights his fight, you know, makes it boring in a way. Just keep the jab out there. Keep the jab. Just touch him. Touch him. Change it up on him. Check him with the hook every once in a while. Just keep him on the outside. Just box him. This can go really, really swimmingly for Cullen. Both these guys are interesting. Because I don't think much of Zach Chelly at all. And then he dominates Anthony Sims. And I'm like, oh, wow. Maybe this guy's okay. I don't know. He's okay. Then he gets dominated by Mark Jeffers. And I know some of y'all are Mark Jeffers truthers. Mark Jeffers is not, not it. And he got dominated by Mark Jeffers. That was his, no, apparently that was his last fight. He fought some guy who was 8, 124, and 5. So this guy fought. 137 times, and he's won eight times. And this is who he fought last. Uh, this was back in September. All right, and he got the win. He's got a win over Jermaine Brown, and he's got a, a draw with Jack Cullen. So the resume tells me Zach Chelly is better than I'm giving him credit for. I, I think he loads up too much. We, we saw in the Anthony Sims fight that he can fight going backwards, which was, which was interesting. But he wants to be in the mid-range, right? Like, he wants to come forward, but he doesn't want to be all the way in. He wants to kind of be in that pocket, in that mid-range, not in, in your chest. So it's just an interesting place for him. Like, he's such a, a niche fighter. Like, he's got one specific niche where he wants to be, but he's not good at getting in there. But somehow he's got these wins. If you just showed me a tape of Zach Chelly, I would say this guy sucks, right? But he, he doesn't. Like, there's something to him, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. Until I can, I just see too much that Colin can do. Cal Colin just needs to fight, just be the taller fighter. Zach Chelly isn't skilled enough to get on the inside. And it, it, yo, when I'm picking Colin here, it's really, don't get over aggressive. Don't do too much. Stay composed. Touch him. Keep the jab pumping. Don't trade with him. If you get him on the inside, rip your uppercuts. You can, you're better than him on the inside. You're just not better than him on the mid-range. And, and that's where he is. And 
Zach Chelly seems to – he winds up, he loads up, but doesn't really have any power. He's got just seven knockouts and 14 wins and 17 pro fights. I, I don't get Zach Chelly at all. Maybe you guys can. He can't close distance. This thing lists him at six foot. Uh, he's not six foot. He's absolutely not six foot. I, that can't be right. Like five seven. He's only like three inches tall, shorter than Colin. Colin's long. Colin's not a a a terrible fighter. He's not a world class fighter. He's gonna lose when he gets to that level. But he's got some good wins. And I, I thought he won the first fight. He just beat Mark Heffron. He got destroyed by Diego Pacheco earlier this year. So that was his 2023. He got destroyed by Pacheco and destroyed Mark Heffron. He's got the stop. He's got he's got a, a win over Ivani Yildrum. It's a good win. It's a quality win. So he can do enough. He, he needs to land his right hand. His, his right hand is money shot. I think, you know, if there's one shot, and neither one of these guys have an impressive knockout ratio. Collins is under 50%. He's got just 10 knockouts and 22 wins and 27 pro fights. But it seems like he can do damage with this left hand, with his right hand. He can set you up. He doesn't throw a lot. But I don't really see Zach Chelly loading up. I mean, really sitting down on a shot, right? Like he kind of wins him with his arm. I just don't like Zach Chelly. I, I get he's got some moments. I, I'm not going to say he sucks because he's gotten these wins. Like he's beaten quality fighters. I just don't understand how how he does this. He's so Zach Chelly is so easy to hit. I think his face is going to swell up. Collins just needs to fight disciplined. If you ask me who's gotten better over the last three years since they last fought, I would say Zach. Uh, Jack. Jack Cullen, I'm sorry, I was saying Zach, I am struggling with Zach and Jack. Jack Cullen has gotten better. You know, Cullen just needs to keep him at bay. If he does get in the mid-range, lock him up. If he's on the inside, he can fight him. Cullen can hold his own if Zach Chelly gets in his chest, but that's not where Zach Chelly is comfortable at. I think Cullen is slow, and that's his major issue, but again, it, it's not like, Chelly is a master at slipping shots and getting on the inside like Mike Tyson or Tank Davis. It's, it's not it. We're going to see. The odds on this are pretty good. We're going we're to pull up the odds. Let's take a look at the odds now. Jack Cullen is minus 160 on the money line. Uh, over 10 and a half is minus 250. We got to take the over. I don't see this thing ending early or than scheduled. And Jack Cullen by decision is, is plus 125. It's almost even money. I think that's a great bet. So what I would do is I would take Jack Cullen minus 160. That's going to pay us 6250. It's not terrible. Over 10 and a half rounds is going to pay us 40. So now we're up to 102.50. And what I would do is also take Jack Cullen on a half bet to win by points, right? Because I like the odds on that. It's paying plus 125. So a $50 bet makes us, you know, a half bet makes us $62. And 50 cents. So if you wager 250, that's 100 on Jack Cullen on the money line. That pays 62. If you wager another 100, a one times bet on the over, 10 and a half. Now we're up to 102.50. And a $250 bet is going to make us another $62. So that's 164.50. 164.50 on a $250 bet is pretty good odds. That's pretty good odds, right? Like we were able to really move things down. You know, if I said, were to say to you that Jack Cullen is going to win by points and I gave you those odds, you would take it, I would think, right? Does anyone not see this thing, right? So what I'm saying is $250 bets, you know, $250 bet makes you 162 250 That's not bad when Jack Cullen's minus 160 on the money line. If you just put that on the money line. You could even take this out if you wanted to. It's not doing much for you. You know, just take, I, I would leave it. If you just wanted to leave Jack Cullen, 
because it's easy money. The thing's going over. And minus 250 is not terrible. But if you just want to take Jack Cullen on the money line and Jack Cullen uh, by by decision, a $150 bet makes you $84, $85. I take the money line bet. It's safe. The thing's going the distance. My only, you know, the only possibility is that Zach's face gets swollen up, but Zach Chelly's face gets swollen up and, and stopped. But I, I don't see that happening. I, I think they'll certainly go the distance. So I, you could even make the distance a two times bet if you really wanted to make money on it. I wouldn't do that. I would just do a one times bet on Jack Cullen, a one times bet on the over, and a one time and a half a bet on Jack Cullen by decision. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. I'm losing my brain. Guys, this is getting bad. Uh, also, follow, follow 3D Boxing. Uh, also, follow Texas Boxing. See, my channel, that channel is completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. And all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is January 10th, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.